This video is a bit of a follow-up to something I did a couple weeks ago. I was talking about decisions and I mentioned how data-driven decision-making is a bit of an oxymoron. So I want to dive into that today and show you what I think is a much better approach and much simpler, in my opinion. Let's jump in. Hi there, my name is Ruben Ugarte and I'm a professional treasure hunter and I help companies find those hidden treasures in their company, whether it's in the data, the decisions they make, or even their people. And I think they're always there and it's always fascinating to go look for them, then turn those into some kind of outcome, increase profit, revenue, growth, or whatever else may be. Decisions are really happen all around us. Right? We take decisions every day in our daily lives, professional lives. And there's a sense that if we could use data to make them, to drive them, they will be much better. I think that's the opposite. In some cases, data becomes a hindrance. So data-driven decision-making to me uh, is not the right approach. And I think there's a much more effective approach that you can use where you still use data, but it's put within the right context. You know, this is uh, the topic for my second book. My first book will be out in March, 2021, or maybe it's out already, depending on when you're seeing this. And the second book will be out in 2022 sometime. And it'll be focusing on decisions and uh, a better approach that isn't so much data-driven as data-supported. You know, the, the reason for this is simple. If you depend on data, how do you act? What happens when you don't have any data? You're not always gonna have numbers to support your decisions or to, to drive your decisions. So if you don't have data, what do you, you know, do you stop making a decision? Do you just make it? So we can't really rely on data all the time. So it's fine to support it, to help you provide backend, but using it as the main driving force to me is uh, eventually gonna fail. And we can look at COVID-19. You know, governments uh, at the very initial part of the pandemic did not have much data. The sessions were tougher. I get it. But towards 10 months in, a year in, they had all the data. I mean, they had the contact tracing, they knew what was going on, they understood the virus, there was vaccines, and they still were struggling to make the right decisions. Now, those decisions were hard. Should you lock down the economy or save lives? I get it. It's not an easy decision. Nonetheless, the data itself really didn't make much of a difference. They still had ethical considerations, strategic considerations. At the end of the day, common sense. What do you do here? What's the best approach? What do we maximize? We have all the data. We still have to make a decision that may or may not need the data. So let me give you six ideas here to think about on how to make your decision-making better using data. Number one, you want to remove the friction as much as possible. You know, I had a client where they were really struggling to user data in any way or form. And we created a simple email digest that went out once a week and the CEO called the best email he received a week. And it just had a few widgets and maybe a couple pages long, but it gave a high, uh, an overview as to what was going on, what was working and where they needed to focus. So removing the friction for people to consume data makes it easier for them to use it in making decisions and supporting decisions. Where are you gonna sort best practices? There should be some central repository, some wiki. I had a, a colleague of mine, I think called it a, a, a learning book, a launch book. It's just a simple place where you store best practices, where are some of the assumptions, where are some of the KPIs, where are some of the previous decisions that we made that worked out well. So it's having a central place for that. It's great. Think about the issues or challenges you're gonna run into. When you look at decisions, you can think about what happens if this goes wrong? What happens if this goes right? What can we do? You know, what's sort of the preventive or contingent way of approaching this as a, a mentor uh, always mentioned to me. So you can start to think about potential issues and how you may combat them. What's the balance between the quantitative and the qualitative? So you have data, you may have hard numbers, but do you have soft numbers? Or maybe you have uh, soft data, you know, interviews, surveys, but you don't have hard numbers. How do you balance those two to make sure you're getting a complete picture, a general sense as to what you need to do? And six, when are you gonna think strategically? A lot of times it's quite easy to be in the weeds, to be tactical, but what's gonna be the strategic time? Even, you know, 60 minutes a week, which may not sound like a lot, or maybe it does, it can be a great start to start thinking about where you need to go as a team, as a company, from a strategic perspective. And again, data that plays a role here. It can tell you what's been working, what's not, but there's still a general sense, a general intuition that needs to be used to make the final decisions. And that's all I have for today. Make sure you subscribe, like, whatever else uh, you do on YouTube. You'll get videos on a, on a weekly basis. You get notified about those. There's also two links in the description. A link to my weekly newsletter, The Growth Needle. I share similar ideas on a text format every week. And there's also a link to Twitter. I just started using Twitter. I think it's a great way to follow me, engage me, share ideas, ask me questions, whatever it may be. Finally, in the comments below, let me know uh, what you think about data-driven decision-making. Do you think it's an oxymoron? Do you think it's not? Let me know. I'll have to hear that. Talk soon.